Tour d'Alsace Stage 3 was a summit finish up to La Super Planche de Belfi, which has been used a lot. It's going to be used tomorrow in the women's race and been used in the Tour uh, as well. So anyway, pretty exciting finish. It's basically, they used Planche de Belfi most years in Alsace. Last year, um, Santiago Umba won up there for Androni Sidemek, uh, which is now called Drone Hopper. And anyway, there are quite a lot of strong riders, um, a lot of British riders to be fair, like Gloag, um, who signed for Jumbo Visma, who was second in GC coming into this, Finley Pickering as well. Uh, for, and then there's a couple of Australians as well, like Matt Drisner's, no, Matt Dinham, sorry. Um, and then, you know, a fair few other French guys as well who are looking strong. And you can see there's a pretty strong pace. And this Atlantic uh, Nord U guy, I believe Jordan Jega. Um, he goes on the attack, lovely flapping jersey, love to see it. They're sort of a new French Conti team. They've done quite a lot of big races, to be fair. They did like the GP Marseilles earlier in the year. And um, yeah, he, he looks pretty strong, to be honest. Now, if you don't know the Planche de Belfi climb too well, it's been used a lot. It's it's quite interesting actually looking at the climbing times. Now, they weren't unbelievable. Um, on the Super Planche de Belfi, um, I got the data of a guy, the guy who finished fourth, uh, and he did about 5.7 watts per kilo for the 20 minute climb. And in the tour, let's say they'd probably be doing, people's estimation was that Poggy did about 6.2 or so. Um, obviously it's slightly different because there's a lot bigger group in the tour than this. So maybe, well, actually maybe there's not, but like it's paced harder. So you sort of get a better draft. Um, but even so, like they're very strong, but there is definitely um, sort of a, a difference, which is obvious. Anyway, you can see here Finney Pickering is on the front pacing for his teammate, trying to get this back. Um, his teammate is Ruben Thompson, who's like a really strong Australian, has some good results actually in the Giro as well. Um, they're missing their sort of strongest rider, really, which is Lenny Martinez um, for the FTJ Conti team. I mean, he's, you know, got, I think, 11th overall in the Tour of Outs. He was super strong there. So he's definitely going up. But Finney Pickering uh, is, is actually really strong. And we're going to talk, talk about him more, to be honest. Um, once the attack. So here, Finney Pickering actually decides that it's time to go across. Um, it's sort of hard to tell, but he has been on my radar for quite a long time. He turned up to this t t uh, this time trial in UK, and uh, he binned James Shaw and came one second from beating Connor Swift on a pan flat TT. I was like, wow, this guy's pretty special because he's tiny. Anyway, it turns out he's doing like six point two watts per kilo for twenty minutes on a TT bike, age sixteen. Um, so pretty crazy. Um, and I think think that was twenty twenty maybe. And then now he's like first year under 23. Um, so yeah, no, he was a junior then. But anyway, yeah, he's like first year under 23 and he's looking super, super strong. Um, and his numbers are really impressive. And I think like um, he's definitely going to be going world tour. It just depends at what time. Um, but you can see here, he goes he goes past the Atlanta um, U rider and basically just rides him straight off his wheel, which is pretty impressive. But anyway, going back to what I was saying before um, about the sort of climbing times, they're pretty similar on the gravel section. Um, but on the on the second section, they're they're on this on the whole climb they are a fair amount down. I think that's mainly just because they don't have as many piecing pieces. Um but anyway, that gets brought back. I actually think it was Ruben Thompson who attacked then. Um that gets brought brought back and now Finney Crickling has decided it's time to go off the front. And um really with two point eight kilometers to go, it's a pretty bold move. You might think, well it's not that far, but obviously the last bit is really steep because they do the normal finish or plunge to Belfi, which is like a really steep ramp. And then they do even more, which is the gravel part. So it is a really hard finish. Um, but I think it's also one of those climbs where you think, again, striking out, you get a lot of draft. Like you'll see on this sort of downhill section, there's like definitely a big advantage, obviously being in the group. So it is it is very bold to, to strike out so early. Um, but at the same time, I think it's, um, you know, it, it makes sense. You've got good legs, you've got to go. Uh, and you can see this is the sort of steeper finish. The traditional finish is at the top of that little steep thing. You can see, I mean, you can probably remember this from when Chris Froome won the stage, but it sort of downhill goes up to uh, up to this really steep finish. And you can see here, like, um, it is like, you know, 16, 17% here. Like, he's probably doing like 6.4, 6.5 watts per kilo, maybe. Um, and he's he's not going very quickly up here. Um, but anyway, we're now on the helicopter footage. It seems like the, the moto uh, footage was not too good. Um, but you can see like the, the gravel section here, they're just going to try and find some of the riders. So I'm not sure why I actually include this. But anyway, my editing is, sorry, is still, is still getting better and better. Um, despite me being in the YouTube game for a significant amount of time. Uh, but it's a super good climb. And I think it's interesting to benchmark how everyone does on it because, okay, there is a lot of drafting, but because it's used so many years, like, you know, you've got data from like 20, uh, 2012, 
um, one from one up there. Then you've got 2017 data, 2019 data, um, tw data from the TT and the 2020 tour, um, as well as also at 2022, um, where you have more sort of data about um, recently. So anyway, you can see that this is Finley Pickering on his own. He actually has quite a big gap um, going into the into this final section of gravel, um, but actually it gets reduced quite significantly on the gravel, which I think makes sense because obviously a lot of people were probably holding back thinking, you know, there's no need. But anyway, Matt Dinham, who did come fourth in this, he um, did, yeah, like six point, he did 430 watts of 64 kilos. So I think off the top of my head, it's about 6.8 watts per kilo um, for the last sort of three, four minutes of this climb. And he was top 10. Um, so it goes to show you like Pagacha did put like 40 seconds into him. Um, but you can see now Finney Pickering's coming up to the, fi to the finish line um, with like a decent gap. And it goes to show like the guys are definitely saved some towards the end because they were all absolutely flying up this last part. But it's pretty interesting to see just the difference between these guys. Um, but yeah, he looks absolutely battered. Um, and you can see everyone else is just coming across the line now as well. Um, and it's, yeah, it was a resounding win for the big man. Uh, I might do some more content on Tour of Alsace, but I think generally it, the summit finish is sort of what excites me more than anything else, mainly because the people who win it tend to go into big things. Um, so anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you enjoy this video and I'll see you in the next one.